Hi fellas, Knife back again and today we've got another inbox review for you and today we're going to be looking at Meng's new Phantom F4E, the Phantom 2. Um, now I've not seen the other earlier Phantom version but apparently it's a really nice kit so this is going to be my first look. Uh, bear in mind that we have quite a few Phantoms on the market. We've got the Hasegawa one which is showing its age now. We've got the Academy one, which was uh, superseded, the Hasegawa one. Then we found then the Tamiya one and the Zukimura ones. Uh, the Zukimura ones, it's just a feat in engineering. Um, really quite expensive. The Tamiya one, it's Tamiya, so it fits together brilliantly. And then we've got this one. I might have missed some of the others, but I don't know all the uh, 48 Phantom family. So... Looks a really nice kit, okay, as you can see from the 3D renderings on the side and all the colour callouts in AK. Uh, we've got so, a little bit more blurb on the side and we've got some quite striking box art. So what we'll do, I'll get you on overhead and we'll crack on. So straight into the instruction manual, uh, you first up you get a few uh, pages in loads of different languages. Uh, and it describes a little bit more information about the actual Phantom itself. You've then got the, uh, the well, just bigger than A5 and smaller than A4 uh, instruction manual. Okay. Uh, lots of different uh, languages on the warning parts uh, and bit, bits and pieces. Again, how to cut bits off, tools you'll need, so forth, so on how to apply decals and all that sort of stuff. But then we move straight into the cockpit. Okay, so we've got separate panels for the actual cockpit tool, which makes things a little bit easier to paint. Uh, then we're adding the rear bulkhead, the forward bulkhead, uh, some foot rests, okay, uh, in there. Before then we add the instrument panels, uh, two uh, joysticks, the rear, of the so the the rails for the injection seats we then move on to putting the cockpit actually into the nose adding is that the fueling probe in there as well uh yeah i think it's fueling probe because i don't think the cannon sits there okay uh then we move on to building the tail and these two bits here are both a little bits of photo etch and you can see the different bits and pieces as it's going together with the tail, etc. We've then got part of the vent system. So underneath the actual aircraft, this bit here, you've got two vents that are slightly open. We've then built all the wheel wells, the front and uh, the main wells, which go on to the actual aircraft, uh, which that was a falling down part of the Akani one because you had to put the main wheel uh, wheel well wheel legs in uh, quite early on in the build. Then we've got the uh, intake tunnels uh, with some fans on there and the engines on there as well. Before we then add the wing sections to it, and I like how they've done this wing section onto there. It's a little bit uh, better located than the Academy one. The upper fuselage then joins the flow fuselage. We've got the front intake scoops. Before then we move on to adding uh, the flaps to the aircraft. And, and you can see you can have it either retracted or extended, as you can see there. We've then got the arrestor hook and the engine nozzles before we then move on to the big uh, tail of this aircraft. We've then got the uh, leading head slats that can be extended or not. You can then see up here we have the actual those little flaps I was telling you about okay and the main landing gear doors. We've got the big air brakes going on before then we start looking at attaching the wheels so both sides of the wheels nose wheel uh, doors and then 
we have got the radome that goes underneath the, the nose and then that nose there. And it doesn't tell you about adding any weight, so make sure you add some weight to this aircraft. We're then looking at the fuel tanks, the AMG 65s, the AIM 7s, the AN ALQ 131. We've then got the GBU 10, AIM 9, AIM 9 NP, pylons, and adding all the weapons to the pylons, like so. Then adding all those to a fully loaded out F 4 Phantom. We then move on to the injection seats and looking at it there's no harnesses so no decals or anything so you'd have to go out and get yourself a set of harness if you're going to have set of set of harness you might as well get some injection seats okay for adding the radome and the uh, cover for the uh, forward section then we've got the actual canopy starting to be built with a frame on there so you can have that open and close and you've got the loading uh, landing sorry the the ladder before then you put the PO tube on okay so you've got different different types well that's right or yeah different types then we've got the sprue map okay uh, we get mass in this we get some photo wedge and we get the decals we have uh, I think it's four versions, maybe five versions. So we have got uh, one from Germany in June 1986. Uh, one from the Philippines from 1991. We have then a uh, Republic of Korea Air Force, I think that is. Okay. So the the North Chichang Province, October twenty twelve. So it's actually three three markings, okay, three markings in there, and then you've got all the loadouts, decals, and all that sort of stuff. Then the where the masks go, and then you have your colour callouts in uh, Mig. Is that no? Sorry, not Mig. So AK and water base Accrescent. I've never heard of those. Anyway, if anyone knows them, put them uh, put uh, make a note down in the uh, com uh, the comment section. And that's the actual Phantom Two. So we'll now get out the plastic. So this is a. Uh, it's got properly. It's got sealed bags. It's got staple bags. It's got resealable bags for certain parts. So. I have opened them all up, it just needs me to get them all out. So we'll start with the actual main uh, tail. Okay, you can see we've got some really nice, fine recessed rivets and some panel lines. So this will be, uh, some parts of this, this be bare metal. So that will make, will stand out really, really well. We've then got that, part where I thought was a fueling part to go on the actual side of the aircraft. We've got the address, addresser hook there and some other bits and pieces. We've then got the forward, uh, the 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 in, intake scoops, okay. Uh, the RAM ones, I don't know whether these ones close up or not, okay. But again, you can see some really nice, lovely detail on there. We've got the uh, air brakes, some of the doors, and on this side, again, some nice detail. We turn it over, and we can see we've got the nice uh, texture and the uh, parts uh, of the rivets all on there and there. And you can see we've got some parts of the actual instrument panel. Okay, well, it looks really nice. Overall, some really nice detail on there. Okay, same as on the uh, this part here. Now, I can't compare this to the Tami one, but I can to the uh, Academy one. And so far, what I'm seeing is far superior to the Academy one. So we'll just get these parts out of here. Okay, 
uh, we have some clear parts they are going to be for the actual weapons and then we'll look at uh, the this part here so we've got the petals for the engine we've got some uh, fans the uh, wheels unfortunately they are not weight on wheels so you'll have to create that yourself uh, and the other parts of the engine part of the seat i mean the seat looks quite nice but again you know you're going to need to get some uh, harnesses for it okay so inside we have again some nice detail on the petals there and we've got some nice detail actually in the engine so by luxury the injector pin marks are past the engine so past the part where the fan goes in so you're not going to see that so that's a nice touch then move on to some parts of the uh, weapons so they were all the same so i'll just show you this one so we've got it in multiple parts uh and you can see that we've again we've got some nice detail on here and as we go around okay next up a couple of sprues so again we've got some more weapons okay so they're all the same so again we've got a nearly one piece weapon so we just got two fins to actually put on and those fins are really really thin okay and yeah we've got the, a nice so it's not flat at the back okay so you've got where it's hauled out where the actual uh, exhaust comes from from the rocket and then we have part of the radome we've got the tail parts in two parts okay so some nice fine rivet detail again all over this some nice raised parts so there were the uh the the yellow uh, i don't know what they actually are for but the yellow parts they're going there are bright we've got one of the instrument panels and again some really nice detail on there and then move on to some parts of the actual cockpit the landing ladder and some more of the actual uh, weapons so with this one as you can see again we have the indentation but you're not going to be able to get rid of that seam line so what i did when i built the last type of this i just cut myself uh, a circular bit of plastic card and just a really thin piece push it in there and that hides the actual seam line but again some nice detail on here okay just the two fins to put on by the looks of it so again nice simple part to do to build and deal with no panel you have to deal with so and then we move on to uh some of the smaller parts so we've got instrument panels we have pylons one piece pylons which is nice and again we can see the lovely uh detail on there the one of the other instrument panels the combing for the front of the cockpit those foot plates and yeah all really well done nice detail really sharp crisp molding and not overdone so next one so again some more parts for the weapons and then we've got the massive fuel tanks that this carries the intakes and if we turn them over there is some injection pin marks that maybe that need to be dealt with but this is going to be buried deep in the aircraft so you might not see that far down but also we know it's there uh, two piece pylons one of the uh i don't know if it's a radar or what it is on the front there the scoop side of the intakes so the big plates at the side of the intake okay and then we've got like i said the fuel tanks and 
they should go together without too much issue issues and then you'll be able to easily rescribe those panel lines so some more weapons so we've got that one so these are all exactly the same so I'll just put them to one side and we have the a multi-part uh, weapon system so you've got the two parts and you've got the tail so the tail when it goes on there you're not going to get that seam line and um, i'm hoping that there is an actual seam line when this joins to there because uh, if you glue it on there you might you're going to have to get rid of that and that's going to be a little bit more difficult to actually deal with Okay, and again, another set of weapons. Okay, so let's put that to one side. So again, another rocket. This one's more in more multiple parts. Okay, so uh, it looks like a sidewinder. So we've got the smaller fins, the larger rear fins, uh, which looks like it's got really positive locating parts. So really, really deep in there. We've then got the upper wings and the uh, wing tips. And again, some really nice detail all over that. And the tips there. The flaps and what looks like the slats just on there. We've then got the lower fuselage okay so again all one piece that's very very nice so not having to deal with any seam lines on here uh the a lot of the seam lines along here you you will have the flaps on there so that'll help nicely hide that and again some really nice detail all over this especially i like the detail but this bit sometimes can be quite blank within the actual uh, air brakes next up we have the upper fuselage and some parts of the tail so one piece upper fuselage and if you have a look at that that's it's gonna it's a, these aircraft are, are quite big so we've got a 30 centimeter rule there and we've got a nose and to go on there a little bit on the end so you've got a decent size uh, model here uh, with a, a lot of plastic so you can send again you can see some of that nicely refined rivet detail no spine on the back the uh, zukimura one has a complex spine area uh, to be able to do other versions i believe but again, some nice detail. We've then got the tail, uh, the clamshell bits, and the actual front of the intakes. I hate staple, staples when, when they do it like this. Okay, so I'll just put that to one side. And then we've got the this lovely, look at those, that clamshell detail on there. The, the rivets and the, the lines and you can really go to town town with your metal weathering with that part uh got two of these okay so we have the intakes separate parts for the intakes hopefully they slot on uh nicely uh, just a few injects of pin marks to deal with just there and there but overall really really nice So we're moving now on to the decals and the clear parts. So we've got the a mass set there. You can't really see it, but there is parts of the wheels and the actual thing. And I'm pretty sure it's actual masking tape. I won't really know until I'm building it. And then we've got the photo wedge and a pin. Is that the peer tube? I'm not certain. But if it is, brilliant. But I'll, uh, I'll have another look at the instructions in a minute. I'll see what that part is. 
And then we move on to the decals. These decals are printed by Cartograph. So we've got the, the, the not so many uh, decals as you would find on uh, the actual Academy kit. The Academy kit has one sheet just for all the stencils. So that doesn't look too bad. And then we've got the three main markings. And we it being Cartograph, there's hardly any uh carrier film it all looks really really nice and then last but not least we've got the clear parts okay so nice and protected the only problem with the clear parts is on the main two main bits we have the seam line that runs from uh from to rear that just goes right down the middle so that's going to be need to be dealt with So that's the Meng Phantom, uh, the the E, and by it, don't it L, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I think I would quite happily uh, build this one, and I think I probably am. Uh, it's going into the stash, and for I can't remember what the price is. For the price that that you get, it's. I think it's about 30 quid cheaper than the Tamiya one, but it's only about, I'd say, 20 quid dearer or less than the Academy one, because the Academy one now is uh, going up in price and it's, it's getting harder to find, um, I believe. And the, the Hasegawa one, it's showing its age now. But it's still a good kit. Has a go, don't go wrong, it's still a good kit. And you can pick it up for about £25, £30 nowadays. So it's not an expensive kit. Uh, but again, this kit is, it looks beautiful. And um, for the money, you get a lot of plastic. There's a lot stuffed in there. Anyway, that's it for now. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.